Hey team, we're going to talk about the top 7 VS Code extensions that got me through 2020. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe for future updates. If you're not familiar, VS Code stands for Visual Studio Code, which is a code editor that's maintained by the Microsoft team. VS Code supports extensions, meaning we can bring in all of our favorite tools right into our code editor. Now there's a lot of cool extensions that do a lot of amazing things, but we're going to go through the top 7 that have been core to my development process for this past year. Now starting from the top, it's Sublime Text Key Map and Settings Importer. For a while, I was pretty sold on Sublime Text. And don't get me wrong, it's still a great editor, but I moved over to VS Code, and a lot of the key mappings weren't the same. For instance, one of my favorite features is multi-select, so if I click and highlight postcard here and click Command D, I now have the ability to edit both of those instances of postcard. Alternatively, if I simply add my cursor inside of that line, I can push Command Shift D, which will then duplicate that line. Those kind of features are pretty common in a lot of text editors, and while I probably could have got used to how VS Code has it set up, I liked my workflow the way it is, and this helped me stick to it and keep productive. Next is import cost. When installing packages with NPM, we don't always get a sense of how big that package is when we import it into our project. For instance, in this file, we're importing use effect, which is 8.3 kilobytes, also gzip to 3.3, and then we also have helmet, which is 17.5 kilobytes, gzip to 6.2. Similarly, if I import format from date functions, it's going to tell me that that would cost me 21 kilobytes, also gzip to 5.8 kilobytes. This way I know if I'm importing something really big, it might be costing my users that much time when it's loading in the browser. The next extension is Indent Rainbow. If this isn't your first time looking at code, I would imagine you're probably familiar with indenting code to make it more readable. The issue is, if you have a lot of things indented, it can get confusing which opening tag leads to which closing tag. So it's pretty subtle here, and it might be hard to see, but each of these indents of two spaces are showing a different color. That way, if I want to see where the closing tag is for header, and if this page was a lot longer, I could scroll down here and I can see that this blue connects to the closing tag. Next up is Rainbow Brackets. The concept here is somewhat similar to Indent Rainbow. If we create a new function called my function and we use our parentheses, we can pretty clearly see that this opening parentheses relates to this closing parentheses. And while this might not be the best example, if we add another set of parentheses, it starts to get more confusing. This might be more common if we're trying to do some tricky math within our code. Say for instance, let's say const value equals one plus one. And we want to multiply the sum of that by two. So first let's wrap that with parentheses and multiply that by two. But then we want to add another one to that value, so we wrap that again with some parentheses and then add one to that. And finally, let's multiply that again by two. The issue is, this is a lot of parentheses and this gets pretty confusing. But with rainbow brackets, we can see that this yellow parentheses relates to this closing one at the end here, where the red meets the red and the green relates to the green. Next is setting sync. I'm fortunate that I'm able to have both a personal laptop and a work laptop. And I'm very particular with my settings for my VS Code. But anytime I make a change, I don't want to have to update it in both instances. So instead, we can use settings sync where we can store that configuration in the cloud inside of a GitHub gist, and we can make sure that those settings stay synced between both instances of VS Code. So once you have the extension installed, it'll walk you through the process of logging into GitHub, and then it'll give you the option to upload your settings to a gist. Once that's done uploading, we can see that it uploaded to this new gist ID. While it might be hard to see here because I can't make the address bar bigger, this has the same ID in the gist as it did inside of VS Code. So now, when I go to my other laptop, I can install the same extension, use the same gist ID, and download those settings straight to VS Code. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, you probably know that I do a lot of educational content creation. When I do screencasts or if I'm showing some kind of demo, I want to make sure that I'm using a theme and a font size to make sure it's really easy to read when somebody's watching my videos. The issue is that's not the same way that I like to code when I'm just coding day to day. So Profile Switcher is a way that lets me have different profiles for different VS Code configurations. For instance, my current theme here is Night Owl from Sarah Drasner. It's a really great theme that's more accessible for people when they're trying to watch my videos. So under Profiles, I have this under a teach profile, but when I'm done teaching and I want to go back to normal coding, I select my default profile, which lets it reload, it shrinks the font size, and it resets the theme to my favorite, Obsidian, which gets me ready to go working back in the code. If I'm done and I want to go back to teach again, I can select that profile for teach, it'll reset, and I can reload my settings, and I'm back ready to create screencasts. 
I will say though, the only bummer is there's a little bit of wonkiness between the different profile extensions and the settings sync extensions. I'm not exactly sure how they kind of conflict with each other, but sometimes things get a little out of sync between the two extensions. Next up is better comments. I try hard to make sure that I'm usually documenting my code so somebody understands what's actually happening. The issue with that is sometimes it's all the same color, which makes it a little bit more difficult to read. With better comments, if I'm using the JS Docs syntax and I want to add something like a description, we can see that it's highlighting that keyword differently. Additionally, one common thing to do is write out the word to do, which indicates that there's something that needs to be done with this particular piece of code. Even if it's as simple as adding a test, I know that when I look back at this file, it's easy to stand out that something needs to happen with this particular piece of code. And finally, we have duplicate action. Now, I'm actually curious why this doesn't work by default in VS Code, but I guess that's kind of beyond the point here. When I'm working day to day in my code, sometimes I like to duplicate a file to make it easier to start on something new. For instance, if I want to duplicate index here to create a new route inside Next.js, I can now easily come down and select duplicate file, which I can rename to, let's say, Colby, and it'll create that new file for me, which is a clone of index. Now that seems like a pretty simple extension, and it is, but that doesn't come by default with VS Code for some reason. So with the duplicate action extension, we now have that ability within the context menu. So those are the seven VS Code extensions that I use every day in my workflow. While some of them seem like the functionality is really small, like the duplicate action, it really helps day to day in your workflow. The cool thing is there's a ton of extensions out there which do a ton of crazy awesome things. And if you don't like what you see or you want something new, you can create your own. So I'd like to hear what's your favorite VS Code extension. Let me know in the comments. I'd be curious to hear what other awesome tools are out there. In the meantime, if you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.